Hello and welcome to this week's Tune in Parsha. Last week in Parsha's Bereshit, the Torah ran us through the first ten, ten generations of the world from Odom Mauritian until Noach. In this week's Parsha's Noach, we begin the stories of the flood and the Tower of Babel. First, the Torah runs us through the family of Noach, and then we start with the flood. Hashem sees that the world is sinful and no longer deserves to survive, so he commands Noach to build an ark to save his family and some of each of the animals on earth. Hashem runs Noach through the dimensions and the materials for building the ark, and how many of which animal to bring onto the ark. At 600 years old, uh, Noach is 600 years old when the flood begins to rain down on the earth for 40 days and nights until the flood covers all the mountains and kills all, even the highest mountains, and kills all life that is on earth except for those that are in the ark. For 150 days the water stays like this before it begins to recede. Only 40 days later does Noach send out a raven to see if the, if the water has dried up, but the raven returns. Seven days later again he sends out a dove Still the dove returns. Another seven days pass before Noach sends out another dove. This time the dove returns with an olive twig in its beak, showing that the, uh, symbolizing that the earth has begun to dry up. Seven days later Noach sends out the dove uh, for the last time. This time the dove does not return at all. Noach finally leaves the ark and offers up offerings from the animals to Hashem. Hashem blesses Noach. He accepts the offering and he blesses Noach and his family and he gives them the seven Noachide laws. The prohibitions against murder, idolatry, eating from meat from a live animal, ad adultery, theft, blasphemy, and the obligation to set up a legal system. Hashem then shows Noach the rainbow as a sign, as a promise that he will never again destroy the world in this way. Noach and his three sons, Shem, Chom, and Yofes, plant a vineyard. Noach gets drunk from his wine, and he lies up there. He lies there naked until he's discovered by his sons, who cover him up. When Noach wakes up, he curses Canaan, his grandson, for his part in this episode, and he blesses his other sons. 350 years after the flood, at the age of 950, Noach finally passes away. The Torah then takes us through the lineage and the borders of the lands of the sons of Noach. The new generation plots to build a tower with its head in the sky to stop any future tragedies. Hashem sees this and he makes them all speak different languages so that they cannot understand each other and they are forced to separate all around the globe. The Torah then runs us through, again, the lineage of Shem, the son of Noach, right up to Avram, the son of Terach, who was married to Sarai, who was infertile, who traveled with him in the direction of the land of Canaan, and settled in Haram. In summary, in this week's parsha, we had the flood, the seven universal mitzvahs, we had the story of the vineyard, the tower of Bovel, and the lineage of Noach through Avram. Have a good Shabbos.